My name is Francis Schaefer and I'm the managing partner of Precision Soil Management. The original purpose of Precision Soil Management was to develop highly detailed soil management zones to help farmers manage their inputs, whether that be seed or fertilizer. With the last few years of wetness, we have decided to expand our offering into water management and get involved in tile drainage. Precision soil management strengths in this tile drainage process are Jim Miller's experience in the NRCS wetland determination, the appeal of the wetland, his experience and knowledge of county permitting processes, if the county has a process. The other thing we do is we drive the fields, we capture accurate RTK level topography elevation maps. From that map, we can draw in the tile plan, which will tell us the size and length of the tile, which will give us the cost estimate. Once we get an approval from both the farmer and the contractor that that's a good plan, we take that plan back to the field, flag it for tile installation. The purpose of this video is to explain to you what precision soil management can help you do when it comes to tile draining your fields. I believe it's essential that you contact us before you decide to tile drain so that we have a heads up, we'll know what county you're in so we know what ordinances we have to deal with. We'll also walk you through the NRCS wetland determination or 1026 form. We can also help you determine your potential outlet. Other people that you may want to get involved in the process, say you have a neighbor that lies between you and the outlet, maybe we should get them involved, or if there's a neighbor upstream from that. But in my honest opinion, the first thing you should do if you're thinking about tile drainage and you want to work with precision soil management is to let us know what field you want to drain and we'll help you through the process from there. The purpose of the feasibility assessment is to determine whether the field can be drained to the proposed tile outlet and what it's going to take to achieve that. Where I fit into this operation is I take care of the, the detailed RTK accurate elevation topography map. Um, we have the ranger set up. There's a Tremble FMX in it. So we drive the fields, we get the topography map, the data collected, we take the data from the FMX, we take it and put it into desktop software, and then we can start drawing where we think the lines should go, and the software will tell us if Ridge can actually plow it in to get it a depth and grade. But the biggest reason we're doing the elevation maps and putting the drawings out there is to get a cost estimate for the farmer because you guys want to know what the hell is this going to cost me to drain this field before I get all excited about going to do it. We have developed a return on investment or break-even analysis calculator to show you the payback for the tile installation. All the determinations that NRCS makes for a certified wetland determination is an on-field determination. It's not made in the office. They do a lot of preliminary stuff in the office, but the actual determination is made out in the field. Uh, you need to sign a 1026 form with the FSA Farm Service Agency to request NRCS, to give NRCS permission to come out and make the certified wetland determinations. Pick the one or two quarters that's close to a creek, close to a river that you can drain into. Get an NRCS certified wetland determination made. They need to go to the field, they need to check for the hydric soils, the hydrology, hydric vegetation. Keep in mind, just because you get the determination made does not mean you got to live with that determination. You can't appeal the, de the determination. You've got, from when you get the determination, you've got 30 days to appeal it. And we have appealed some of the determinations that are being made. Once you get the determination made, the next step is how close can I get that tile line to that wetland? that's been determined out there. It's based basically on two factors that use this crazy calculation, but to make a long story short, it's based on the texture. Sandy soil, clay soil, filthy soil, what have you, and it's based on the percent slope. To make a long story short, if you've got a steep slope next to a depressional wetland that's got a lot of clay content, 
we can get that set back within 20, 30 feet. Likewise, if you got a real flat chunk of ground in sandy soils, we've got one set back down that Tulare country where we got some sands, we've got to be 250 feet away. You need to check with your local county for the ordinance you have to deal with. The county ordinance in South Dakota vary greatly and some counties currently don't have ordinances. The two projects we were involved in in fall of 2010 were installed by Rich Loosebrock of Loosebrock Drainage in Brandon, South Dakota. Rich grew up in Minnesota. His father was a tile installer when they were still using concrete tile. He has a civil engineering degree from South Dakota State University and his own loose brock drainage and been involved in tile drainage on his own for the last 15 years. Generally, the equipment involved in installing tile drainage involve a tile plow, a backhoe, some type of auxiliary dozer or auxiliary tractor, and some piece of equipment that will allow you to lay the tile out ahead of the plow. The video you're watching shows the tile plow as an inner drain 2050 a 525 horsepower self-contained unit controlled by a GPS pipe pro controller with a Trimble RTK system and it will pull in a 12 inch diameter tile up to seven feet deep. The backhoe is absolutely necessary when you dig in the junctions or T's where the laterals connect to the mains for the tile system. In my limited experience and observation of tile installation, the efficiency of the installation is directly tied to the skill of the backhoe operator. The dozer is a multi-purpose piece of equipment. At times it's necessary for the dozer to pull the tile plow through tough areas. It also helps in the efficiency of backfilling the junctions where the laterals are attached to the main. Rich Loosebrock uses a JCB tractor to lay out his tile. The reason he does that is it's fast and it will go anywhere the tile needs to be installed. Once we've established the plan, we send that back out to the Trimble FMX. The tile lines will show up, the lateral effect or setbacks for the wetlands will show up. We will flag where the lines need to go. Every tile installation at the outlet will have a varmint protection to prevent animals from crawling into the installation. Tile installations are always started at the outlet. This is the largest pipe and it's called the main. The junctions or T's are used to attach the laterals or peripheral lines or sometimes submains to the main or to each other. The plow will drive along the flagged route to get their elevation data so they can meet depth and grade parameters for that tile line. The plow backs in, lowers his head into the junction, tiles fed into the top of the boot, and the plow takes off. The pipe is then connected to the junction and the soil is gently backfilled in there to hold it in place. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you have questions about precision soil management and how we can help with your tile drainage installations, feel free to call us at 605-302-0085 or visit our website www.precisionsoil.com.